All righty, guys. Welcome to Elevation Call, and thank you guys for joining us. We have some meaty information for you guys today, and I uh, always look forward to this night. It is um, the 3rd of March, and we're going to talk about the March to whatever your next rank is, whether that's area, whether that's regional, whether that's national. Um, there's a lot of reasons why now is the time, and uh, we have some fun things to report to you guys about the recent visit with Luis and uh, um, I'm Mary. I see a couple of people still joining. So I'm gonna have Hal start us off with just recognition of the leaderboard. We have just a little bit of activity in March. And then we also have- We had a uh, great February though. We had a great February, you guys. I, I didn't whoop, whoop. do the count, but it's gonna take a minute to go through the enrollment board and the personal volume board for February. But let's start with, uh, Number 23 out of Arkansas, Beth Plumley. Uh, congratulations. 19, Linda Joyner out of Indiana. Uh, Linda Christensen out of Arkansas, the northern part of Arkansas, Bella Vista area. Uh, Kelly Etzel, uh, Sister Kelly out of uh, Neosho, Missouri, who makes the best cowboy caviar. And we keep telling her that. And the other night, she brought us like a whole bucket load and we had it. I think we've eaten it every day. Every so. day, Kelly. Anyway. Uh, you're going to um, have nightmares. Yeah, number she, Kelly's at 17. Susan Everett out of Evansville at number 14. The Workmeisters out of uh, Arnold, Missouri at number 11. Deborah Ray out of Noblesville, in uh, Tennessee at number eight. Christina Durham at number five. Yeah, Christina, you... We were fighting it. We were duking it we out. Were there duking the it end. out at the end with Christina. <laughs> she finally at like ten o'clock on the last day goes. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Tapped out. Tapped out. And then Hal and Lisa were at number three last month in all of Zalee. So anyway, uh, congratulations to everyone. It's a month of uh, activity and uh, growth and enrollment and introducing people. This is some action. People were in action last month. So congratulations on that. Then uh, over here on the um, leaderboard for February, again, for personal volume, Kelly Etzel at number 25, versus Kelly again. Lisa and Hal are at number 22. We don't get that board very often. No, we don't. We don't order a lot of products to, to make my we, we order some. But, yeah. You know. uh, Kayla Malone at Ooh, 21. Nice, Kayla. Congratulations. Uh, who is this? Melanie. Melanie Crash. Crash out of, I don't know. She, Kayla, where's Melanie? Is she Pennsylvania? She must be. She's in. She's with Kayla's team. And then uh, number uh, number eleven, Rhonda Hope, and she's Rhonda in Hope Indiana. In mm -hmm. Indiana. Jackson. And then number one, number one, last month on the retail drum side. roll, please. On the drum roll is Stephen Jenny Todd, Blue Angel Medical Dental. Number one. I love that. That's correct. Way to Congratulations. Go, guys. This month on that side, we have, again, the Todd's number five. My mom, Helen Henson, at number seven. Of course, it's the third day of the month. Uh, Susan Everett at 13. And uh, Helen, let's see. Margaret Grau. Margaret Grau. Peggy Grau. Peggy Grau. Mm -hmm. I want to say, who's Margaret? She's I know Peggy. Getting, anyway. That's, that's where she goes. At on. number 20. And then this month already, um, Helen and Lisa are number two. And Linda Painter is number three. We've already enrolled a few VIPs in the last well, one yesterday and one today, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And Linda's already done some work too. So. I know Bo always talks about working through the end of the month. And um I we were all traveling to um, Cancun at the beginning of last month. And I kind of felt the effects. It took me a while to kind of get in a rhythm, but we just kind of kept working toward the end of the month. And so lots of great things have happened. Yep, yep good stuff. So anyway, congratulations. You know, that's one, two, three, six, seven, eight nine people yeah and that's all um and uh, that's, that's all, all US. in the u.s and um i just want to i just noticed adolfo uh, joined and um, adolfo is new to our st louis arnold missouri based team and we just wanted to say welcome hey, to adolfo, adolfo. excited to have you as part of the team yay yay we've got uh we've heard so many good things about you so it's great to put a uh, face with the name mm -hmm. and um you know aurora i think her name is, is it a, is that right? aurora Aurora. Yeah. yeah, I was close. That's a beautiful name. That's pretty good to get that yes. in memory. Yeah. She's beautiful. There she is. There she I, is. Oh, it's too beautiful. Yeah. I've never met either one, but uh, it's such a beautiful 
couple in names. So well, welcome, welcome. to Elevation, and you're you're going to learn a little bit about what this company is, a little bit about this platform, because today I've I've thought so much because Luis was here last week. How many of you guys know Luis? Why don't we do this real quick? Can I inter inter interject something? Yeah, sure. So we have some new people and maybe just a refresher. So this call tonight, uh, Elevation, is what we call our Elevation call. We do it twice a month. And this is our team. So this is kind of more personal. Uh, you know, we, we we recognize our team, work people for the leadership they're demonstrating. And uh, we try to educate people, but encourage people on how to do this, how to build a business. And and uh, what's going on as far as from our perspective, we try to give you some pointers and um, encouragement. And anyway, so that's just a reminder about what this call is about. We do it on the first and third Sunday nights of the month. And again, this is our personal team. So. And it gets a little while to wrap people's mind around. So what's the freedom call on Monday night versus elevation call and like, what's the difference? But uh, this call obviously is a much smaller call and we really focus on things that we, you know, can't always say is, is a corporate global team. We did learn a lot. And one of the things I wanted to share with you guys just are the things that we learned from Luis. And, you know, many of you guys know Luis. He is just an amazing person. If you've not gotten a chance to talk to him personally, you, you really should. He is an advocate for the sales force. We've never had an advocate for the sales force before. So he really occupies a new spot in, in our lives building this business. And he had just, to tell you about his commitment, he had just gotten back from how many days in Peru was it? Like several. Several days in I mean, Peru. He went from Cancun to Peru. No, he went from Cancun to uh, a different place in Mexico where he was building corporate in Mexico. And then he went to Peru. Well, then he came home and then he went to, to Peru, Peru. And then we had him on our schedule for the day after he got back. Right. Here. And we, he literally, we put him to work from noon till nine o'clock. Yes. We've never done that before. And, and so some of the things we learned from him and, you know, Big shout out to Linda Painter, uh, Linda Christensen, Kelly Etzel. Um, you guys don't forget Randall and Randall. Yeah, I don't and then see him on, on the okay. call right now. But you know these meetings don't happen with just one person. And um, but Luis had just literally gotten in. His flight was delayed. He got into Dallas late on Tuesday night and literally got in his car at five thirty the next morning and drove to Northwest Arkansas, five hours away. And so he gave us this perspective of all this growth that's happening in Latin America right now. And it was fascinating because, you know, it's, it, it, they have different products there. And one of the things he shared with us is the fact that they have two products in Latin America, Amalaki and Amalaki coffee. And he goes, you know, people are smuggling products from the United States market into these Latin American countries because they don't have access to them. And, and here, you know, we, you know, we don't have a, obviously a perfect world either, but we have about 30 different products that all of them you could build a business on. And so he also talked a little bit about the fact that people in Peru are earning like $500 a month on average. Like that's what their economy is in the that's Peru. That's not the least money. That's, that's not their, the least. That's, that's just economy. the economy to kind of give you a little perspective and, 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 uh, you know, in all transparency, Latin America and the market in Peru was damaged by our former CEO in ways that the U.S. market was. So it, it, he gave us a little bit more of, of a perspective. And, and you guys might have heard of Murta, who's kind of the leading um, ambassador in Peru. And so we asked a lot of questions about, you know, what is she doing? And tell us a little bit more about her and what is her strategy to create this kind of growth? We've heard a lot about the three and 30 that is working for them, which is come in at gold, bring in three golds, people like you in your first month, um, in that first 30 days. And, and that's the model that they're using right now. But we learned that Myrta had been in Zri, which is a company that Zalise purchased for seven years. So she is, she's not new. She's not a new ambassador. She's somebody who's, who's pretty seasoned. And what right now, what's really working for them is doing a, daily personal development call they call magical mornings and they do it from 7 to 7 30 in the morning and they read personal development books they do affirmations and this is kind of their leading tool well, they've been doing that for 
probably a year and a half. Right, right. So it started with one day on a Monday when Merta said, you know, this model with our present CEO isn't working very well. <laughs> this was a year and a half ago. And we had known about this model for three years before anyway, not to go into all that because we've changed it now. But what she did is kind of what Lisa has done. And that is just made the commitment to be in front of the team, to encourage the team, to, to educate, to build yourself, uh, your belief in yourself, doing that one-on-one -on -one and in groups and so forth. So she made a commitment about a year and a half ago on Monday morning to get as many people who would come together had nothing to do with business. It was strictly about personal growth. And for 30 minutes, she helped people grow in that. And now several of those people are teaching that same mindset piece, but it's not Zelise, it's not Zuri, it's not any of the business stuff. It is strictly focused on personal growth. And, and so that's what they did for about a year and a half mm -hmm. before Bo started teaching on this, uh, you know, three and, 30. Three, and, three, and uh, three and one, you know, duplicating that model here a few months ago. So it's not like they just started doing that. Right. They've been doing it for a while. And I was like, well, that's good to hear because that's really what we believe in. We believe in self-development right. and growing yourself and getting your, your unbelief behind you and your limited thinking behind you and overcoming it. And so they were prepared anyway. So Absolutely. So just to kind of give you guys an idea, as well as I was asking about, you know, like what kind of presentation they're using in there. Um, they actually put two extra slides in the presentation. One of the slides is their before and after, before Zelise and after Zelise. So it could be a Lachey story. It could be a skincare, uh, a, a weight loss story. It could be just a story of feel better story, feel better story. But they actually have personal pictures that they put in their presentation. And they also have an experience slide where they have pictures of Cancun or whatever the next trip is to kind of personalize what Zelise has done for just their experience, which I thought was really interesting as well, because we've always used the standard corporate presentation. And it, it started my, me thinking about when I get in front of somebody new, a new prospect of putting together a binder, which I had an old one, but I, I've started updating my binder with my why and also with different sections where I can show somebody either the science, the product, um, or the platform, which we're, we're gonna talk about. And uh, so just to kind of tell you guys what we learned about the event with Luis, we learned that one time slot- Our is, event, our, our event, event. This is when Luis Linda, came. Randall and Kelly and Linda, the other Linda and uh, several other people. We, anyway. We're always trying to find out like, what is the ideal time for a meeting? And we couldn't narrow it to one time. So we started with 6.30 and then we worked backwards. We did a 6.30, we did a 4.30, we did a 2.30, and we did a noon. And we allowed people to kind of choose what time that they wanted to come. And so literally, you know, a shout out to Linda Painter, who offered her home. Uh, she actually remodeled her home, took her massage room, made it as a lease room. And um, she basically uh, just allowed us to kind of come and go in her home. Not sure exactly what her neighbors thought. They might have thought well, it was a brothel. <laughs> but just saying, they uh, hope strangers, you know, she serves food. She had binders there, product applications, and um, it allowed her to get her team and her prospects in front of Louise, which was really, really helpful. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, one of the things that Linda has done just action wise is she has pushed me. We committed to do, <laughs> I think she's joining the call right now. Don't tell her I'm talking about her, that we had committed to do one week, once a week, a live in-person meeting somewhere in Northwest Arkansas. And Linda was the one that was like, so what's the, what's the next meeting? Can we do, uh, can we do, a, you know, a, a class at, you know, whatever time next week. And so she was the one that was always having me look at my calendar to see what could I support. And even as we were setting up this meeting for Luis, she was actually texting me, goes, hey, can we set up a class <clears throat> around lunchtime next Tuesday? Because not everybody can come this week. And so, you know, just the fact that she has been pushing and pushing and pushing on doing these live events. 
Then I got a call Friday night from Linda and she's like, Hey, what at are you almost doing? 10 o'clock. Well, no, this was at oh, like earlier? seven o'clock. Okay. She's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm home. How's it a meeting? She goes, can I bring a prospect by your oh, house? Yeah, Which we don't live next door. So she's 30 minutes away. Um, and her prospect is, is a dear person, which I'll let her talk about. Um, and so she was able to just kind of introduce her, him without really knowing what he was doing or why he was coming to our house, introducing him to our Zali story. He saw our house. He saw our Jeep. You know, he saw the story live and in person. And, and so, you know, what I want us to take away from that is that leaders take action. And, you know, Linda has shown that, you know, I don't know if she's actually um, hearing my words right now. Linda, are you on or did I just imagine it? She was on for a minute and now she's not. Anyway, I wanted you guys to be able to hear a little bit of, from her. And when she comes on, I'll Here, have her. Well, some other things. So not only did she schedule meetings, like they, they call them classes, but she said, can I host it or you want to host it? Or I've got Linda willing to host it. And every week it's been more than one now. Yeah. And um, um, and also not only that, but her and Randall both have been growing in their skill in presenting because I would say you probably presented live and I did two or three times for them. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Before they stepped right. in and started presenting and they're, and they're growing. And, and Luis even commented because he's heard her, uh, Linda present before. And he said, you know, she's really, they're, they're improving. They're, they're getting, the more they do this, the more they kind of hone in on the message that's, that's uh, most important from our slides, but also this, the awareness of the people in the room and that sort of thing. So, you know, when you go shift into action and make a commitment to yourself and to carry this message to other people and you stick with it, um, you know, you grow and uh, your team grows and you personally grow. And I just, I really, you know, respect we, that. We had a name for that. And it, and it, the name is consistent persistence, just consistency and persistence over and over. And Linda, I see you now. Can you unmute and tell us just it's any, all fuzzy. any takeaway from uh, your, your time, uh, your marathon meeting with Luis? Looks like she's out. Randall's sauna. Are you in the sauna? Fuzzy. Linda, can you hear us? We can't hear you and we can't really even see you. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, we're we're gonna come back because I, I can't I can't hear you if you know it's interrupt like you're this. muted. Yeah. You're muted. So if you can figure out how to unmute, then we'll we'll come back to you. But I was, you know, Hal read something to me this morning, and uh this is kind of shifting into a little bit more of a serious conversation. But, you know, I've been with Zelise now almost seven years. You guys have heard that number over and over again. And it's just crazy to me that it's taken me this long to finally figure out why I'm doing this. And what really prompted me is the conversation that Luis had about how they present the plan in Latin America. And they kind of include a picture, the before and after, and, you know, so kind of like, what is their dream? What is their why? And then they also ex include the experience slide. And it, it made me start thinking about, you know, how would I explain that to someone? So many people, when we talk to them, they, they think we're trying to sell a product. Have you guys ever heard that? Like, I'm not a salesperson. Like, you're trying to sell me a product. It's, it's very, well, very Well, now, common. here's the deal. We do have something to sell, right? We have products to sell. But that's not our, that's not our ultimate goal. And I think a lot of people, until they get it, a lot of you uh, and a lot of people in, quote, in Zalise, whether you're a customer or trying to, to earn income, can't get past for yourself. I feel like I'm selling something. Well, until you have a why, you're probably going to feel like you're selling something. And Lisa's had a why from day one. And, you know, she's revisited that this week. And I think it's a beautiful thing that she's done. It's been evolutionary. But one of the things that Hal said to me was just the reading. Um, talk to us a little bit about your reading that you do every day. And would you read us what you read me this morning? Yes, I will. And I, and this is kind of a teaching, encouraging point. So I do read every day. I read several things in the morning early. 
But one of the things that I've introduced to all of you, and hopefully most of you have your own copy of this by now, if you don't, uh, it's because you're brand new or you just don't want to do this, which that's your choice. But this little book right here, if you can get a copy of it, James Allen, it's that thick. Each reading is a, that's it for each day. It's just one page, two page. It's called Day by Day with James Allen. And so it's number 31 days. Anyway, before I read this this morning, or yesterday, it was yesterday mornings, I had told Lisa, I said, you know, Lisa, your superpower, your superpower, and you have a bunch of different powers, but your superpower was the least is you are just steady and persistent. You are steady. You are consistent. Um, I, I don't know anybody. I honestly don't know anybody in anything in the world that is more consistent and persistent than my wife, Lisa. That's how she has won in this business. It's how she has remained through difficult times. It's why many of you are on this call. It is because of your why, but I can tell you it's also because of her persistence and consistency all the time. And so just day before yesterday, I told her that. I said, you know, before we even read this, I just I just complimented her. I said, Lisa, you are so consistent and you just hang in there and you just repeat yourself. You just do things daily with discipline. And I think if people could kind of emulate that, that one thing with Zelise, they too could be successful, not overnight, but as Bo says, over time. And that's where consistency and persistence pays off. So anyway, uh, to yesterday's reading after I told her that, um actually was about that and so um so uh anyway here's here's the reading from actually it was today mm -hmm. it was today's today. okay so this is on the third it's called don't quit your circumstances may be uncongenial but they shall not remain so if you only perceive an ideal and strive to reach it you cannot travel within and stand still without for many years i have carried around a poem called don't quit one of these, one of the lines says, stick to the fight when you're, when your hardest hit. It's when things seem worst that you mustn't quit. In our darkest hour, it's hard to see the end of our circumstances. All we can think of is our conditions worsening. But it's usually at this time that our greatest growth can occur if we'll see the moment as a growth opportunity. If we'll see it as a time to learn how to control our thoughts toward an ideal that we cherish. One thing I share with people who seek my advice when they think their life has come apart is to help them understand the power that even the tiniest of actions can have when taken into a negative situation. Remember in science class when we learned that a body at rest tends to remain at rest or a body in motion tends to remain in motion. This is especially true in overcoming circumstances because paralysis usually keeps us in the condition longer than we'd like. But even more important is that once we've started in motion, even though it may not seem like much, know this, it's now only a matter of time before our, our out, totally out of the situation that has gotten us down for today, we'll be out of it. So do you want me to read the poem or not? It's up to you. Well, you're asked, you'll want to ask me too. I think okay. it's kind of cool. Okay. You guys uh, want how to read you this poem? I'll read the poem. Okay. Yeah, there we got, go. Susan right. said yes. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns, and many a fellow turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with just another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too, too late when the night came down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems 
afar. So stick to the fight when your hardest hit. It's when things seem worse that you mustn't quit. So there's that. That's awesome. Very good. So persistence, consistent persistence, and we will definitely want to hear some, some thoughts from you guys, but I have one more thing to share. Thank you for, for sure. sharing that with us. And we've gotten the question before, um, you know, d during our darkest times with Solis, and we've talked about them quite transparently. You know, we had a CEO that almost crashed the company. It's taken a long time to actually legally sever him from the company. Um, and, and I've given that a lot of, of thought, but today it really dawned on me in some of our reading, and, I, and I'm going to get to share with you, do you guys know who Phil Stutz is? He is a psychiatrist who is a psychiatrist to the stars and 43 year career. I didn't know who he was either, but one of my mentors, Brian Johnson, I've read to you guys before. He's written his first book called Arete, A-R-E-T-E, -E, and it's really highly recommended. This was, there was a free download that I got to do, and this was part of the foreword. And I, I want to read this to you guys. It's not long, but it was really impactful for me. It says, just the way a seed holds inside it the potential to become a tree, every human being has a soul that holds inside it a vision of a future self. But that vision won't emerge by itself. Your soul has to be trained until it is strong enough to have an impact on the world. My job, his job, Phil Stutz. That was good, right it, there, that was good. Is to guide and encourage my patients as they move through their soul training. And that was Phil Stutz. And he talks, he goes on to talk about your soul has to be trained until it is strong enough to have an impact on the world. You guys, what we do, this business, this platform has given us a place to do soul training. It's not just about products. It's not just about, you know, earning income. If it's anything, if it's anything, it's soul training. It really is soul training so that you can make an impact in the world. And and so what my thought, you know, when I read this, I'm like, that's it. That's why I couldn't quit. It's because this is a platform that monetizes soul plus life plus health training. It's a health training program. And seeing a product, seeing just the company, is a very small part of this platform. And in the face, for me, I came to this industry as a spoiled person who thought somebody else was supposed to take care of me. And in the face of a very significant mission and a challenge, in the face of disappointment over and over, I had to learn how to bring my highest self to products discontinued that I liked, um, to shipping challenges, to high shipping costs, to resistance from other people, from accusations of from other kinds. people, from IT glitches that we still have. And we had to learn to do our work through this platform, develop the strength of soul to connect people, to nurture this collective soul force that we have together and to unlock the hidden potential in ourselves and others. And I have never in my life had a platform like Zelise for that. And, and that is why we never could quit. It, it really wasn't about the money. I didn't even know what our collective earnings were until just the other day. It's about the soul journey and what this platform can do for the soul. Yeah. So that is really what I wanted to share with you guys. Um, honestly, I, I want to hear your thoughts as well, because somebody at some point is going to say something to you that's going to tick you off. Um, and and yet, when you know your why, it, it becomes entertainment, really, to, uh, you know, and, and even when I have conversations with you guys, everyone's at a different stage. You know, I've been doing this over six years now, and this finally dawned on me. All the reading, all the, the work that we've done, it's about the collective platform of Zelise and what this good, what good it can do in the world. So we always recognize, it's, it's interesting, and I'm going to wrap this part up, and then we're going to open it up to you guys, but. 
you know, we always recognize the leaderboard, those are different role people and, and those who've, you know, on the, on the personal volume board and, and um, you know, that represents your business growth. Okay. That's what it represents on a monthly basis. And when we do this, that's one measuring stick for that. But one of the things that I have seen over the years in this business, and I learned it and saw it in my previous life, like before I met Lisa and Zelise, because I work, I am a person who struggles with life and I've overcome a few things and still have some more to overcome. But I work with men in particularly uh, who uh, have those a lot of challenges in life. And um, so I have some experience with this. And so over the years, many times, many times, I've got a text or a phone call with someone on our team and they're not growing their business. Um, they've encountered a struggle. They've encountered a glitch. They've encountered a, a challenge. They've encountered something that they don't agree with, that they think should be better. And we have these conversations. And what's cool for me, and I'm just I'm going to let y'all in on the secret. There's 21 of y'all on the call tonight. Okay, here's the secret. Every time you call with that, here's what I know. There's two choices that you have that we're not probably not even going to talk about. You're either going to grow as a person through this or you're going to quit. There's only two options. That's what's going to happen. You're either going to grow or you're going to go, this ain't for me because the challenge and the difficulties are too tough and I'm not going to grow through it. You didn't know that you make that decision, but when you choose to grow through it and it looks different for each of you and it has for me and for Lisa, then, you, then you're getting from Zelise the hidden value that you don't even know that you signed up for. So I'm kind of letting you all of y'all in on the secret tonight that this is a platform that has great products. It is a platform that you can earn income with, significant income. It's a platform that you can develop some beautiful relationships and you'll meet people you would never would have met without this, these connections. But underneath it all, if you hang in here and are consistent and persistent over time, then you will grow as a person. You will become a better version of yourself. It's just going to happen. And so, you know, we can't promise that, but we see it all the time. And every single person that I've, you know, there's one or two very new people on this call. But other than those, um, every person that we've had an in, in, encounter with, over some time, we have seen them grow as a person and become a better version of self. And, and you know, kind of the beauty, uh, you know, so many of you guys um, have, have traveled this journey with us. And, and you know, some of you are even nicer, like Jenny Todd. She's oh, so, yeah. she's so she nice. She used to be really ornery, guys. She just, she Jenny mean. Todd, before she got into the ladies, there was nothing sweet about her at all. But now she's just the sweetest person in the world. Yes, absolutely, Kayla. I'll, I'll get the the author going on there. But honestly, you guys, it, it is the it is a journey worth doing, and uh, I just would love to hear from you guys um, as well. I know Kayla had a couple thoughts she wanted to share. Can you put that in the chat? Okay, you put it in the chat. Okay, okay. yeah. Hal's going to put the author of the book in the chat. Um, I'll put the, I'll put the name. Off. Highly recommend it. But we would love to hear from you guys. Just you know. Um, there have been some challenges this week. And I think that was one of the reasons that I started thinking about this. Like, why have we stuck with this? Our 15 mils are getting discontinued. That was our number one selling product for, for Hal and me, for our team. And, and so I've had conversations with each of you guys, uh, a lot of you guys um, this week about, you know, how, how does that impact the business? We're at a topical oh, wait, that was a right now. And uh, so that, you know, that is, been an issue for us in February, and it might not be available till the end of March. Those are the kind of things that create challenges for us. Um, so we are always aware of those challenges. And what I am still learning to do is to bring my highest self to those challenges. Uh, it's pretty easy to have a reaction and slap somebody and, and, you know, get mad and, and think, you know, my gosh, you know, what would my volume have been had I had the products had access to them. Uh, but uh, before we kind of turn this over, just so everybody knows, we do have 
um, a next best option to the 215s. And and Linda Painter, I'm going to have you start first um, because we were, I see you now and uh, we're going to turn this over to hear some thoughts from you. But Linda calls the CBD CBG combination the twin oils, which I thought was kind of a cute thing to call it. And now our 30 mil sizes, when they're on auto ship, are $159 for the for the combined. What two. were they originally though? Let everybody know that originally you bought them separately. They were $198. Right. So they were $99 each before. Yeah. And so now there is a combination. And I've really not had, you know, a lot of people that have expressed any resistance for that. If they do, I'll say, let's just get CBD. And and that's fine. You'll just get one bottle. It's the same. You're talking price. on your enrollments. Uh, well, no, th these are the people who are on the CBD CBG combo that have oh. get in, on okay. auto ships. You know, so just know that you guys, we do have that 30 mil size that's just a little bit more expensive than the 15 mils, which were unevenly filled. So really important to know that. And uh, Linda Painter, you missed all the wonderful things that we said about you and the actions that you've taken and how you have uh, you have driven me to schedule more meetings and um, entertained us even on a Friday night. So tell us a little bit about your takeaway from Luis and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Let's see, you're still muted, Linda. There you go. Um, hmm. I don't know, I have a lot of, a lot of thoughts about it. I, um, having him here was very encouraging having him here present he was he brought credibility to our business he um when he talked to uh, angie um she was just for two hours she was just um when she left she was very excited because she's never really had this kind of um, contact even with the other businesses that she had been in and uh, she got she was very much inspired and even though I did not understand a single word that they were saying you could just watch her face and her body language and and the smile when she left so and at uh, Linda tell them who who is Angie oh Angie is uh, Mari Bell's um, ambassador that she enrolled she's a uh, beauty salon owner she does a lot of retail in her store of other products but she really likes the lease so she would like to really concentrate on doing the lease products and um she has a lot of she has a lot of traffic and and a and a, and a group so you want to find people who are already probably possibly be in other businesses because maybe they are not happy where they're at or er, not earning the kind of income that they would like. So, um, and that's, that's, an, that's an example. You want to find people who are busy. Yeah. You want to find people who are busy. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, hear you now. But well, I want to uh, congratulate you, Linda, though. You, you've been really tenacious. Um, you've, I know you say, hey, I don't know a lot of people, but you have gone out to meet new people yeah. and you hit your area, uh, your city rank again this past month. And I know you've got more, more people in your pipeline, including the guy. Uh, in fact, did you know right now that you were uh, number, uh, number three on March uh, on the leaderboard? <laughs> Finally, <laughs> that was the Friday night enrollment that you did. What's <laughs> funny is that last month you had a lot of people on your team on the leaderboard, which that's really cool. That's what we yeah. love to see. I mean, we obviously want to be on the leaderboard ourselves, but mm -hmm. I lost count of how many people on your team anyway that are on the leaderboard or doing something. And last month, the month before that, too. So, you know, when you have team members on the leaderboard, that's when you know that you're growing a business and you're being consistent. Yeah. You're doing what it takes to yeah. build your business. And mm -hmm. so uh, not just you on the leaderboard, but your team members. So mm -hmm. um, anyway. Any other thoughts, Linda, that you want to share about your um, your marathon meeting? It was it was fun. It was it was great to be to have them from back to back, you know, and, and uh, because um a lot of people cannot make it to the time we always seem to pick that is ideal for us and we, what we think is ideal for them. So having the, those, um, having the um, 
having Luis here and his full attention gave us time for Angie to have her one-on-one -on -one with him. And then, um, then we had a one-on-one -on -one with Scott. Uh, and then we then we had the two other classes and it was just it was just the right number. I mean, had if we only had one class, we would have been too crowded in the room. And so it, it worked out great. I thought it was also interesting uh, for those of you who are kind of interested in, um, you know, starting some live meetings, uh, doing a 430 and a 630. I just would give people an option when I would invite them. I'd say, hey, you know, I would love for you to come meet Luis. He wants to meet you. Is 4.30 or 6.30 better for you? Right. And and yep. uh, it, I I will probably never do just a one-time meeting again at my, at my house, just saying. So thank yep. you, Linda, for all your hard work. All you right, and Randall let's... both. All right. We've got about 20 minutes left here. So let's see if anybody has any comments. Um, yeah, I think Kayla had um, a couple of questions or comments. Kayla? Can you hear me, Kayla? All right. I, tell us I can't either. But does any, let's, we'll come back to Kayla. Does yeah, anyone else have a comment or a question? I don't think it's our computer. Okay. So I have a comment. Oh, okay. Here, Linda. Hey, Linda. Uh -huh. Well, I was writing it in the chat and I just said, okay, I'll say it. I am a woman of persistence. <laughs> I love uh, the teamwork. I love the support from Susan and Christina, Hal and Lisa, and hearing what others are doing to give their, to grow their business. So I want to thank you, Hal and Lisa, for sharing those words of encouragement. I love a challenge, but it takes a lot of self-talk of remembering why I started doing this business in the first place in order for me to remain focused as I keep the negative talk out of my head. Uh, this has been a business that, I mean, it's it's challenging. I did it. I began it, too, because I wanted to help people, genuinely help people. And then know that I will be rewarded for my efforts. Uh, sometimes action, you can't always uh, know exactly what is being done just by the leaderboard. But I do sure. like the idea that we, that we, uh, that the least uh, recognizes people for the work that they're doing. And I say congratulations to Linda Painter and Christine and everyone on this call. Whatever you may be doing, I know that you're doing that's why we're here, because we are trying to, trying to do the best that we can. And you run across some things that will stop you or hinder you or slow you down. But I always say you can block it, but you sure can't stop me. And that's that's truth. So I just say congratulations, everybody. And thank you so much, Hal and Lisa, for all that you are doing to encourage us and give us tips on how to get better. Uh, as we grow. Oh, I love that, Linda. Thank you so much. And Linda, you know, the beauty of this group is it's a mastermind. It's just, you know, we have taken a lot of rejection over the six plus years. And I think in some ways, you know, once you get beyond the body blow, I, I had the resolve that, you know what, you might try to silence me, but you cannot make me quit. And I have found myself that I have developed more power the longer that I've I've gone in this business. And so you're at your most vulnerable state. And Linda, you know, you've you know, you've done other businesses. You're you're bringing a wealth of business experience to this to this platform. But when you're new in the lease, you're at your most vulnerable state. In fact, we we laugh that you're like a baby wildebeest. Like new in the lease is your first year. First year. I mean <laughs> like a baby wildebeest on the African plain. And, and what Linda Painter did is she just said, you know what, I'm going to partner with you, Lisa, and I'm going to just bring my best inviting and we're going to be able to build this together. And, and she's, she's invited a lot more people than have shown up, but I don't think she's ever actually had a meeting that someone didn't show up for. I mean, like at our meetings, like she invites enough people 
and and gets follow up with them and make sure that they're coming. One of the things about Linda Painter is that that I've noticed is that she has a bit of Lisa in her. And I told her that the other night <laughs> she's in some ways she's like Lisa in her consistency, but also she has the courage to call someone and say, now you are going to be there, right? Like, I mean, I'm expecting you to be there. Like, I'm I'm going to meet you at that place or I'm going to be on the Zoom call. And many people invite people like they'll put out some social media post and expect everybody to show up with no contact. You know, it's it, it, that's where you're at. But you're going to have to grow into personal inviting, whether it's to a Zoom call or to a three way Zoom call. And you have to invite enough people to that call for it to make a difference for you and for more people. So, and Linda's done that. She's consistently done that on a regular. And so her team is learning to do the same thing. And, and because we we live within 30 minutes of each other, you know, we've done really most of our work except this call live. And I've seen, because I, you guys, we've done this once. I mean, we've built, we did a CEO tour, ironically, the day that Linda had this marathon meeting on Facebook, I got reminded that four years ago, we were starting our CEO tour with our former CEO that really started the beginning of the end. And it was it was almost on PTSD day. for me to see it. We've built it before. We've built it live. We've been all over the United States building it live. And and so for us to be doing it again, it, it you know, you you have to really, really get clear about what is your purpose? What is your why? And and it almost has to look and feel different this time. And, and and so let me let me say this too. So I want to make this point. It's really obvious that what Hal and Lisa, what we're doing is we're building in our backyard. Like who's ready to go in Northwest Arkansas? And it's Linda and her team. And maybe a few other people, but you know, Barbara Jerky drove all the way. She drove two hours to be at our 6:30 meeting of the night. And Barbara's been a part of our team for a while. Uh, been through some health stuff and job stuff, but she drove all the way up two hours and then drove back that night. She's on the call tonight and she's enrolled somebody this week today. Like today. So, I mean, she brought in somebody, she drove two hours. So that's kind of the hub. Well, most of you on this call are not in that hub. Now, Chris, there's a group in Evansville that Christina and Susan and a few others, Linda Joyner can, can come together and make that happen there. But you have to decide that's what you're going to do. And if you don't have anybody in your area, then you have to say, then I'm going to do this on Zoom or I'm going to go face to face with people. I'm getting out of my house. I'm getting out of my comfort zone. Every Wednesday, I'm going to be at Starbucks or I'm going to be at the coffee shop. I'm going to be at this place or I'm going to invite people to my kitchen table. But that's what you're going to have to do. This this is no we can do face to face on Zoom, but we can't do belly to belly and we cannot exchange the kind of energy and in and, and, and relationship that is needed. And I will tell you. I will tell you that the right people in the world, they want to be in the presence, like physically in the presence of the right people in the world, whether it's one-on-one. -on -one. There is a need, a, a hunger in the world. And oftentimes people don't realize it until they actually get together with someone else. But there is a need for human person to person being in the same present space that people in the world need right now to be together with a purpose or an idea of hope. And you can offer that, but Zoom, <clears throat> which we use, it's a new tool, but it is it will never replace. It will never replace getting with people. And as much as we would love to travel to you <clears throat> where you are, it's not economically feasible or wise that we do that until you have until you have done it in your own backyard and, and then we will come and i want to shout out and louise will come even though she <laughs> does not want me to say anything marcia smith you know it's coming um marcia and i were having a conversation uh, this week and that's another thing guys People who are working this business text me and call me like we have conversations and I, and I love that because then about I, the business about the business yeah and so Marsha texted me and, and and we were talking about the fifteen mills we were talking about one of her her clients and then she just kind of let it drop that she actually conducted her first lunch and learn live with twenty seven people the other day. Ooh, ooh. 
And where did that come from? I'm like, what did you say, Marcia Smith? Marcia, did I get my numbers right on that? Yes. <laughs> what the Lisa told me about it, but I'm like, where did that come from, Marcia? Well, I'm as you know, I'm I'm a holistic nurse coach as well. And I've been trying to figure out a way to put the coaching and the cannabinoid therapy together because my wheelhouse is about stress management and sleep. And, you know, and obviously we have good products for that. And so I developed this marketing tool because, I mean, I'm retired. I don't really go too far. So I got to, I got to get myself out there. So I decided I um, would do this lunch and learn for this place where I volunteer, you know, put myself out there. So I've been working on it. I probably signed up. I agreed to do it in probably uh, December, which <laughs> early January, and then put, put a date on the calendar and made myself develop a presentation and a handout. And I, I did it just with a paper handout because they didn't really have audio visual kind of things there. So you know, you just put it out and they advertise it in the community and you see who shows up. And we had a re really good turnout. And I don't know if it's because of the lunch or the topic, because it's a free lunch. <laughs> but that'll do it. Anyways, it was it was good. I, I was ha very happy with the turnout. And, um, you know, I followed up with the people that I followed up with anybody that left me an email. And I've also followed up with the people that handed in their profile that attendee profile that I asked them to fill out as we went through the presentation and so I don't know nothing so far but people's wheels are turning for sure and it kind of gave me motivation to you know keep doing it and so I need to now just figure out some more places to go and say hey would you like to hear this presentation and it's not heavy on Zelise and I don't honestly I use some of the graphics, but I don't really go into it because I want them to, you know, hear about it and then hopefully just have a conversation with me. So we're taught that in nurse coaching is that you, you know, you kind of give your offer once you have that, start building that relationship, which is what I've been hearing this whole time with this platform. So just trying to combine the two together and see what happens. And go so I there. have two questions. I have two questions for you on a scale of one to 10 with 10 being like blowing it out the top. Uh, how, how do you feel about the actual invitation, the event, the number of people that showed up in general? How do you feel about that? How it went one to 10? I say it was an eight. Okay. No, that's um, great. I, that's great. I felt really, actually, I, I could probably stand up there and go around into every building and talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the second, here's the second um, question. Um, and this is to me more important. How do you feel about yourself having done that on a scale awesome. of 10? Yeah. Like, I, you... like probably a 10 because. Awesome. Steve, that's yeah. what it's about right there. I'm so proud of you. You know, I mean, I, just... I did sit in the bathroom for a couple minutes by myself before I went out. because like, Did you throw yeah, up like, or did you get my, yeah, get my butterflies. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not a huge public speaker or anything, but. I practice. I was prepared, and that's why I was confident. You that's know, so great. the more you do it, the more <clears throat> confident you will become. And just like y'all said, and um, I love this whole concept of soul training to make an impact because I think that's what I've been searching for too, and and trying to reinvent myself as a nurse and you know to still help people. And I, you definitely grow for sure. Figuring out how to help others, you've got to figure out how to help yourself first. So. There you go. That's beautiful. That's so great. And you know, one of the things that I look and I see, you know, Steve and Jenny do professional presentations. I know they do a lot of them for sleep medicine. And 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 so, you know, our choice, like you don't have to be a health professional to do this business. Go build a team with them. I was the one that when I met Marcia, she's got a seniority over, I was like a little holistic coach, new grad, and she's already a year out. So she was already effectively working as a nurse coach, working with stress. When I said to her, Marcia, would you be open to hearing about this whole endocannabinoid system and its role in stress management? Because I thought, you know, 
once you're sitting there doing coaching and you're having to do things to drive your own income, wouldn't it be nice to have a residual source that can operate without you? And she was open. That's, you know, Marsha, to your credit, you were open to that conversation and you've just taken it one step at a time. And and honestly, you know, we've grown to love Marsha. You just get to know her and love her and have personal relationships that we never have had outside. Even as a nurse coach, y'all wouldn't have had it if you didn't have this. Y'all have been doing it. I wouldn't have known her. Wouldn't have known it. So without Zelise. But I will say, I would love to take a trip to the Buffalo, New York area sometime in the like spring and summer, not in the winter. <laughs> but, you know, and if you set that as a goal, and you, we work out a goal, I think Lisa and I could come or, I, you know, we would get there just like we've mm -hmm. been to other places. But, but I will say, that we, we'll, we've raised, we've kind of needed just practically as the model for ourselves, we've needed to kind of raise the standard of our expectations of our team for us to come to an area to, for us to come there. This is part of the model that Luis and, and Bo are bringing to Zelise is it's not about them showing up because they're not big shots when they show up like former CEO was. We hope that we're never the big shots. We hope we can bring a message and help you. But we think it's important that we come to you and we come to you with intention and to help you in your market, not to have just one meeting, but to have a half a day mm -hmm. in a market. Right. And and Luis and Bo and, and corporate, I think that's the direction they're going to go is when we come to an area, it's kind of because you've earned it by your own activity in your own backyard. And um, that's always the way it's been, but we're reemphasizing re that. And, you know, elevation calls great, but really your one-on-one -on -one presentations and building a team in your market um, is critically important for, for your, your growth and your team, because that's where you're going to have the most success, honestly, is in your own backyard, absolutely in your own area. So, all right. Any uh, other thoughts or questions? <clears throat> oh, Christina. Hey, so I also, um, one of the things that I think I've learned is because we live here in Evansville. So we've been in an area that Lisa, you've been in, and there's been a lot of people that have heard about Zelise, know about Zelise, but have never really tapped into it. And um, there was something that I needed to hear from someone at one point, it was a life coach. And I just happened to have a one-to-one -one with her when I was going through a crazy brain space. So get out there and connect with your people because they really are fuel for your soul, I promise. But remember that um, the creator or God, whoever that is for you, your moral compass, um, Remember that he has already lined up the line of people that are just waiting to meet you. You just have to put yourself out there. And if you've got the courage to do that, you're going to run into them because they're already there waiting for you. Right. Amen, sister. And you guys, I don't know if y'all are friends with Christina on Facebook, but when Christina joined our team, like she's way younger than I am. <laughs> and she was already really very interested in social media. And she goes like, I just see myself as building this different. And I'm like, girl, I'll learn from you. I don't know how to tell you how to do that, but we will absolutely learn from you. And so between Christina and Luis, he taught me how to post on my story. And Christina, you kind of taught us how to go live and the importance of that. And I, I want to tell you guys that I've gotten my last two enrollments came from either a Facebook story or a live. Uh, just today, I put a live out there based on a conversation I had with somebody else. And uh, in fact, it was Barbara Dirk. You put somebody on the phone with me who was 55 years old. Mm. 20 years ago, she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and now she's on 15 medications and stage four kidney failure due to them. Let me put it mildly. That pissed Lisa off. I was just like, are you freaking kidding me? And nobody had ever mentioned the word endocannabinoid system to her. We know that fibro is an endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome. But anyway, so I put this rant on Facebook Live <laughs> today, and literally an hour later, I got a Facebook message from the only two-star general I know in the Air Force, and he said, I think that you can help me. And so literally, we but just, you've known him for a I've long known time. Him for, I've not, well, yeah, but I've known him for not, a long time, but not I've not had any conversation with him. But my point, learn how to do Facebook stories and learn how to do a Facebook Live. And if you don't know how to do it, we will teach you. Right, Christina? Because that yeah. has been a superpower for you. It has. This week, so just, just so you understand, one of the VIPs I signed up this month, when I got her on the phone, it was because she reached out to me on Messenger and said, I need ultracell. I want to be a VIP. She knew all the things already. 
she'd been on ultra cell for seven years, but her ambassador was no longer working the business and she never became a customer. She just had products sent to her when she needed it. She had realized that her anxiety and her blood pressure were directly correlated. So she knew she needed to get her anxiety under control for her blood pressure to come into, into balance. And she reached out to corporate and she's like, I need to buy product. And they were like, we don't do that. So here's, here's the steps that you need to take. So they told her everything that she needed to do. And they said, we'll find you somebody and pair you up. She waited a few days. She didn't hear anything. She literally said, I prayed last night and said, Lord, please give me the person I need to talk to. And the very next morning, I was the face that showed up for her on Facebook. So put yourself out there because people are looking for your voice. They're looking to connect to your personality. You're, you're the person that's going to solve their problems. So put yourself out there and don't be afraid to do that. Because there are still days that even to do a live, I have to psych myself up all day to do it. So know that it's, it doesn't come easy every day. So just put yourself out there when you feel the need to, because sometimes it takes Moments like Lisa had or like I did earlier this year with my dad to realize who we are, why God created us. And you've got to be willing to just put yourself out there and stand in the gap for those people that don't have anyone standing in the gap for them. That's great. Thank you for, for that, Christina. Yeah. Any other thoughts, you guys, uh, Steve and Jenny, you guys have any thoughts from Pensacola, I do. Florida? I, I do. And I want to agree with Hal how we love you. We love you dearly. But Lisa Bell is a badass. She is number one in all of the least. Hey. She is a great leader, a great example. Whenever Hal and Lisa are doing anything, I'm on it. I, I want to hear what they have to say. They, they're wonderful. And somebody that doesn't feel the love and warmth from them you're, you're, you're dead. You know, who doesn't want to be part of this just to feel belong to this group. You don't get this out there, guys. This is, this, this big, this is, they're wonderful. And I thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for all your time and effort. We do not take you for granted. We appreciate you very, very much. Oh, thank you. Hey, St Jenny, thank you for the, Good thing you got sweet finally. I know. <laughs> thank you for the great video of y'all walking on the beach too. Yeah. It uh, just did wonders for my soul. <laughs> okay. Well, we didn't do, we didn't send you a video today, but that's what we did this afternoon. So, okay. Well, do, I, anybody want to come down here and walk on the beach with us? You're welcome. Hey, happy grand, happy, happy grandparents. Is it happy grandparents day today for all of us? <laughs> Maybe we yeah. need to have an offsite meeting for the U.S. and Pensacola. Just saying. No, I'm saying. That, what do you think, y'all? Seriously, would y'all go to Pensacola if we put a, a trip together? For okay. Down? Okay. I, I would. Here? Okay. Would you? Okay. All right. Well, okay. hey, listen, we will work on that. But let me tell you this. You guys got to do some work at home. Do some work at home. Build your business. Invite people to hear about this. You can do this. I mean, you really can. And you don't need us to show up to do it. You don't need Luis to do it. We're going to help you. But if you wait on us to come to you to get it done, that's not going to happen. It's and just I'll not going to happen. The though. easiest way to start it is just introduce me to someone on the phone. Yeah. Introduce That's me. what Barbara Durkee did uh, today. She just said, you know, Hey, I've got this person that is open to a call with you. And I said, do you know how to do a three-way phone call? Because if I call her person, she learns, Barbara learns nothing about anything. And so I'm like, she said, yes, I do. And I said, okay, I'm going to wait until you do a three-way phone call. And that's what really was that 55 year old lady with fibromyalgia. She did her an absolute service. Yeah, she really today. served. Barbara served that lady. So yeah. just introduce us guys. And, and that's where it's like, we're not in sales. We're, we're looking to create lives changed through a solution, either a physical solution, a soul solution, a mindset solution. This platform is so big. I'm just so grateful that you guys are here. And I see Dan. What time is the is that freedom? Dan from what, California? That's Dan. It's got to be Dan and the man in uh, California. Dan, Dan, are you still nice due to these cannabinoids? Oh, he disappeared. He just, he just, oh, no, he's there. Dan. Yeah. Say um, hi to everybody. Nobody knows who you are. Oh, my goodness. Well, hello, everybody. Um, it's been fun listening. Um, I don't know if I'm nicer, but. The thing that we talked about when I first started, I, I still don't feel like doing that to people. So would you mind just telling them who you are and just very briefly, and then we'll close yours, Elise story, Dan, because we adore you and not everybody knows you. Well, I'm, I'm the uh, uh, person who starts and has really had a trouble um, uh, making headway on this. 
but I love the products. Um, so I continue on the products. Um, when I told Lisa that uh, the thing I was looking for is that this would keep me from wanting to kill people every day um, in my day to day life. Um, I have a I was a, a law enforcement officer for quite a while. And now I'm a school teacher. So that was what it did. And I was happy, um, happy with that. So uh, again, that's about it. Um, not really a long story, but Lisa gets a kick out of that because she knows I'm still around and I'm not in jail. And you guys he's a gentle giant. Dan, what Dan is amazing. He, and he's in the Los Angeles area. So Dan, you're going to have to work on California for us. <laughs> is that asking too much? It's always a delight to see Dan on the call and to connect with him. So no, I'm, I'm still, I'm still uh, looking for people. Uh, you know, sometimes I have a hard time, um, you know, talking to people about it. Um, not so much about it, but about it to the point of either doing a three-way call like you were talking about or trying to get them to uh, come to like an open call or something like that. Um, That's the but, you hardest know, part, Dan. I mean, What's honestly, that? for those of us who like we have a Tuesday night call, you know, that everybody, you know, knows that at eight o'clock central on Tuesday nights, we have an opportunity call that one of the leaders does. That is the hardest thing to get somebody on because they feel like they're, you know, they're going to get pitched something. And, mm -hmm. and so what I love is just a conversation with somebody that really might have a need. And, and the, the way that I get those conversations is, would you be open to a conversation about this with my business partner who's, who's been doing this almost seven years? And we may have a solution for you. Just like Linda Painter says, when I met her at a party and she told me about her heart, heart palpitations, I said, we may have a solution. Would you be open to hearing about it? And, and so if we don't overpromise and we're respectful and we ask questions, then if they're open, that's great. And we walk through that door, you call me, we schedule a three-way. If they're not, we just find the next person. And can I yeah. give an, uh, let me close this call because I think this might pertain to Dan and, and maybe a lot of other people in a, in now and in the future. So Lisa talked today about her persistence and the renewed work because of you kind of rediscovered your why right. you've reformulated your why and it's not a lot different, but in some ways it is different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the why, so I would say this, that if you find yourself stuck and maybe you've been stuck for a long time or not making the progress that you want to make, then I'm going to challenge you to um, go back and look at why you're doing this and change your why. If you've not had success change your why look for a different why that and, and and just open yourself up to that and let me give you an illustration that has nothing to do with the least lisa and i as we've mentioned have started a nonprofit for people uh in recovery people who are, are struggling <clears throat> with life and and we have a model uh, where we put them in the same house together and so recently we've uh, secured our first house just in, well a week and a half ago and since that time and I'm really big into this. I mean, this is like my why for a lot of things that I do is to help these people. But <clears throat> um, part of the deal is that this house needed some work. Okay. And so when I say work, it's we can pay people like I'm paying. We're paying for roofers to put a new roof on and fascia and, and soffit metal. It's been wood. But there's a lot of physical work that needs to be done. Like the house really need to be pressure washed. It's brick, it had some mold on the outside, just, you know, aged. And then it needed to be painted ahead of the roofers. So the roofers are coming Tuesday. So yesterday I needed to pressure wash this house. And today, this afternoon, I needed to paint this house. And it's, you know, even though it's a one level house, Hal was up and down the ladder all day long, all day long. And it's been, and I used to do that, but I got to the point before Zelise that that was incredibly painful for me. And I didn't, I, it became my why to build Zelise because I didn't want to have to do that for a living anyway. So because I have a why to get this house done for these people, um, at five o'clock today, when I was cleaning my brushes and my roller, my knees hurt so bad. It almost made me sick in my stomach. Now I'm bone on bone on both my knees, but I needed to get that job done so that we could get the roofers in on Tuesday so we can get this house moving for these people. 
So what got me up and down that ladder in that painting for six hours this afternoon, up and down doing stuff that I haven't done in a very long time was my why. My why is to get this house done, to get people into it. So I got some things done based upon not just the simple fact that the house looks better, but I needed to get it done because there's a why that's in, that's that's pushing me to get it done that's bigger than myself. So I give you that as an example outside of Zelis, that the principle of having a why that drives you to do things is, is important. That are uncomfortable. That are uncomfortable, that, or that you may enjoy, but you don't like parts of, believe me. And so I have this thing in my right knee where I literally cannot like put my right knee down. I can't bend my right knee the same way I do my left. And um, so <laughs> I wore myself out today doing that, but I got it done. But I had a why bigger than than me. And and so, you know, apply that not only to Zelis, but other things in life. If your why is big enough, you'll find the how. Mm. And you'll also find the courage and the stamina and the uh, fortitude, the persistence, consistency, the energy, the focus to do the things that you need to do. So, you know, if you're just in this to build Zelis, it's not enough. You got to find a why that's bigger than Zelis. And um, just take that, you know, principle. So anyway, there's all right. that. Thank you all for right. that. Uh, okay, guys, um, that's all that we have. And it looks like it's kind of the, ooh, we went way over. We went way over. Like you guys oh, no. are so gracious that y'all just sat there and let us yeah. keep, keep rolling the cameras. I'll talk too much. Thank you guys for being on. Um, we're going to go ahead and let you guys go. We'll see you tomorrow on the Freedom Call. You guys are amazing. You're awesome. You're in soul training as we all are. And lots of love and appreciation and gratitude for each of you guys. Have an amazing week. And um, let me know if you guys would be up for a personal development call if, or like a book, like a book club. Um, I have a recommendation from uh, Nikki Spitzer, who's not on this call, a book called Worthy. I don't know if you guys have read it, but I just started listening to it today. And I really think it hits the nail on the head for a lot of us who struggle with worthiness. And uh, if you don't have your voice, if you don't feel worthy. It's hard to talk to people. And so I think that might be a core issue that we could address at some point. So anyway, I want to hear your thoughts on that. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Hal, for letting us use your computer. You're welcome. Lots of love to you guys. Good night. Thank you Good night. for all the positive Good comments. Good night. Thank you. Good night, Pat. Go get well. Okay. <laughs>